so, oh, you can see my ketchup and my barbecue sauce that I made. Um, it's still sitting over there from yesterday. So I'll show you that real quick. That's not what I was going to show you, but I just realized it was in the shot. So this is ketchup. I haven't taken the re rings off yet, but I will store them in the cupboard without the rings. I will wash these and put the date and everything on them. So you see them with the rings on there because I haven't put them away yet, <laughs> just to clarify. And then this is the barbecue sauce I made. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, wait, what? You made ketchup and barbecue sauce? I made ketchup and barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce normally has has soy, high fructose corn syrup, a bunch of chemicals, dyes, all the things. So it's hard for me to find one that I can eat that doesn't have soy, doesn't have all these things in it that will make me not sick. So I love barbecue sauce. So this is a knockoff from Sweet Baby Ray's. It is a needy homesteader recipe. So if you check out her on YouTube, you should follow her. She has amazing story. Um, I don't want to get into that, but anyways, needy homesteader, like kneading bread on YouTube is her page for the barbecue sauce. And then the ketchup recipe was a Heinz knockoff ketchup recipe from living traditions. Um, Sarah over on YouTube also. So look up living traditions. Yeah. So this way I can control the sugar. I could use monk fruit if I wanted to, instead of sugar to make them more like diabetic friendly if needed, you know, but there's no additives and there's no soy and there's no red dye in them. Actually, the ketchup has green dye in them too, which is just weird to me. But anyways, so it takes a little bit of time, but when you're an allergy family, it's worth it. And I made it from fresh tomatoes. Well, canned tomatoes. But I made it from tomatoes. So how cool is that? Tomatoes and molasses and like just weird, you know, celery seed. You know? <laughs> I don't know. This is my thought yesterday. But these are tomatoes that I canned last summer. So some of them were grown by us, but most of them I got at the farmer's market and they're on my shelf. I had canned 150 pounds of them last year. These diced tomatoes can be anything. Like when they were in the roaster the other day, I was cooking them down because they cooked down for 24 hours in the roaster to make the ketchup. Mike came up and he's like, oh, are you making spaghetti sauce? Are you making, you know, pizza sauce? I'm like, no, I'm making ketchup, you know, but like literally these tomatoes, which came straight from the garden, could be anything. Over the last couple days, I made, oh, there's 14 jars of ketchup. So out of those tomatoes, I made the ketchup. Well, the ketchup turns into barbecue sauce. So it looks like I have a lot of ketchup on the counter over there and I only have four things of barbecue sauce. I can always make more barbecue sauce, but once it's barbecue sauce, I can't go back to ketchup. Does that make sense? So anyways, I just thought it was kind of neat. Kind of, you know, I store a single ingredient item that could have been spaghetti sauce. It could be pizza sauce. It could be all of these different things, but it's ketchup and then it turns into barbecue sauce. So anyways, I just, I just think it's kind of neat that it doesn't look like a lot of times that I have a lot of different items on my shelves, but I know I can make all these different things with the things that I have. Anyways, that wasn't even why I was coming on here real quick, but I wanted to show you what I had laid out on the counter here. So I was just pulling stuff out to make a early dinner and it looked beautiful and I wanted to show you. I haven't been to the grocery store in more than two weeks. I'm going to make a ramen for dinner tonight, but I don't think that I won't be on here very long, uh, but I just want to show you what I had. So these are snow peas that are more than two weeks old that I'm going to be putting in there. And then I have some peppers. I'll probably end up using half and half. And then the other halves that I use tonight, I'll put them in. I don't have, I'll have oh, that's, I don't have any in my cupboard because they're all right here. I'll put them in this size of a jar. This is the size I like the most. This is a wide mouth pint jar. So I'll put them in a jar and put them in my fridge and they'll last for like another week or so. And then they'll be all ready to go. And then these carrots have been, these ones, normally I peel them and cut them into slices, but I hadn't. These carrots were in glass storage for the last two weeks. And then I have some broccolini here. It's starting to turn yellow a little bit, so I want to use this up. So I'm going to put this in the ramen for tonight. And then I have some zucchini. See, you can see it's the same one from the picture a couple weeks ago. It has those weird marks on it. And then I have some squash. So that's going to go in. Again, if I don't use all of them, I'll just put them in glass after they're cut up and then I'll put them in eggs or something in the next couple days. And then I have some celery here that has been in this glass container with the lid on and listen. So a couple weeks old. And this cabbage is actually not from this grocery shopping trip, but from the one before. So it was looking a little wrinkled. So I just took one of the wrinkled leaves off and it looks all fresh again. So this has just been in my crisper drawer just like this for five weeks, almost, yeah, five and a half weeks. But the real thing that's cool is this spinach. This one is from, oh, that's when that one's from too. It's from March 25th, when, or yeah, 325, March 25th. So today is what, May 3rd? 
May 4th? What day is it? I don't know. Anyways, it's May. This is from March. So this is spinach. I just trim the ends like every week or so and then I put new filtered water in it. I do have another one in my refrigerator from when I went grocery shopping two weeks ago, but I had purposely not been using this one up. See, it looks, still looks good. I have purposely not been using this one up so we could show it for pictures, but now it's getting five weeks old and I can add it to my soup for dinner. So, and then I have garlic and an onion, which this is funny. I do not like having less than five onions in my house at all, ever. Five onions <laughs> is my comfort level. And making all of this um, sauce the last couple days, I used so many onions and this is my last one. <laughs> So if anything sends me to the store next week for needing things, it's going to be onions, which I do have some in the freezer and I have them dried and those kind of things. But yeah, my comfort level for having <laughs> onions in the house is always five and I'm down to one and that just, I don't like that. I cook from scratch too often and we use a lot of onions. So, and then these are dehydrated mushrooms. This is just the last little bit, which will be perfect for the soup, especially because Mike doesn't really like them very much. These are dehydrated from my dehydrator and they've been on my pantry shelf. So they've been up there since whenever I did it last, I wanna say around November-ish. Next time I get mushrooms, I'll get enough so I can dehydrate some too. And then they last, they normally last around, I would say like two years on the shelf if they were in a glass jar, but every couple months I'm refilling these. So I actually don't like the texture of fresh mushrooms and I like dehydrated mushrooms more. So I will eat these as a snack often when I'm like wanting a chip or something, I'll eat dehydrated mushrooms, which I know I'm weird, it's okay. But I use that, I have a dehydrator that I dehydrate on. Anyways, this is what I'm doing today. It's been kind of an exciting day. I just wanted to quickly jump on here and say, hey, will you do a video when you dehydrate mushroom snacks? Yeah, I can totally do a, a short little video on that. I have a big, it is quite huge because it's quite huge. I don't have a small dehydrator. I have like the biggest one I could get off of at Amazon, which is in my storefront, but I like to get it all done at one time when I'm dehydrating something and then it like lives in my closet the rest of the time when I'm not dehydrating something. I will put that on the list of things that people have been asking for. A ramen recipe. I use these noodles from Costco. So I love that they have like three ingredients in them. They are organic brown rice, organic millet flour. Oh, there's two ingredients. Like seriously, two ingredients, allergy friendly. I use these and then I use my turkey stock, which I have on my shelf. I have, um, I'm gonna be making bone stock this week, but any kind of vegetable stock or whatever. The recipe for the stock is also on the blog. And then, I don't know, I just kind of do stuff. Kind of throw in some this and that. And <laughs> try to pay attention to what I'm doing today and write that out for you. But those, this, this is the key, <laughs> is these and this and some Worcestershire Shire sauce and all those good things. Again, these are like weeks old produce and I'm going to make a healthy dinner really quick so we can leave and um, it'll be ready before we go and all the things. But anyways, have a good night. I really need to make dinner and eat it before I leave. <laughs> so we will talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>